as a psychiatrist, I do prescribe medicine sometimes. And when it comes to treatment-resistant depression or treatment refractory depression, once you move past second, third line options, the choices are not terrific, they're not very attractive. They're options that really become much more difficult balances of risk and benefit, have a lot of side effects, a lot of difficult longer term potential health effects. And so for a long time I felt that you know, we've, we've got to be able to do better than this. This is, this is not good. Uh, and so I had a second opinion consultation with someone a few years ago. And towards the end of the consultation, she mentioned to me that what helped her more than anything after she had really been through the mill and tried most available options and either didn't have effect or had really terrible side effect, what helped her more than anything was certain cough medicines, the business end of which was dextromethorphan. So she asked me, why can't I just keep taking Dayquil? It helps me. And my answer was that I did not recommend that because she was taking fairly high doses and there was a lot of toxicity associated with higher doses of dextromethorphan. But it made me wonder, what is it about the mechanism of dextromethorphan that might account for her observations? Now, dextromethorphan has a rather rich mechanism. It hits a number of different receptors. But one of its more potent effects is to block the NMDA receptor. So I then wondered what other medicines are already available that have a similar mechanism, and is there any evidence to support those, you know, those agents' use as an antidepressant? And it turned out there are a handful, but when I read the research on ketamine, it spun my head around, because you know, it described fairly unique circumstances. The, the original study, and the studies that have followed actually, are looking at a population that never gets studied. If you have failed to respond to five or more antidepressant treatments, you're going to be excluded from most depression studies. But this was not just a treatment-resistant population by the technical definition. This was a super-treatment-resistant population. Right? People who had had decades of depression, had tried scores of treatments, had really been through everything. And so despite being so treatment-refractory, and despite the fact that there were fairly rigorous standards for what was considered response in that first and in subsequent studies, a remarkable percentage of people had response within 24 hours. And so that kind of thing catches one's attention. And considering what that agent is, ketamine, this medicine that we've known for 50 years and use in doses many folds, many magnitudes of order higher than what are used in this study, and therefore extraordinarily safe, and that was borne out in the descriptions of how people tolerated the medicine in these studies, I had to wonder, why aren't we using this yet? And so, considering that maybe I was missing something, and perhaps this is not a good idea, I spoke to a number of anesthesiologists, because they're the ones that know this medicine best. And I even brought it up to them in sort of a, in not a dressed up way, just sort of a provocative way to see if they would flinch. And no one did, because they know this medicine well, they think of this medicine when they're looking for the safest anesthetic agent. And when they hear the dose, they think, oh, we're not worried about that. So, you know, it was a long process from there. It took me another year uh, before I was able to start treating people. But, uh, you know, what, what has been a process of initially being very ginger about things, because of course we don't have longer term safety data on the use of ketamine in this way, uh, has really turned into a very rewarding process. Because uh, even though we don't have this longer term safety data, at this point, having treated you know, over 100 people and performing 600 some odd infusions, and treating some people over a relatively long period of time, it truly appears to be remarkably safe and remarkably effective with no interdose side effects and people doing really well, people who never would have expected that they would ever have relief from depression.